Kelly here at Driftwood Education Center. Today, we're going to be talking about the world of birds and how they utilize the laws of physics to help them survive. Although birds make flying look easy, if you've ever tried your hand at it, you'll know it's not so simple. Now let's take a look at how some birds use air pressure to achieve their high flying status. Air pressure plays a big role in flight. In a system, when there's changes in energy or temperature, there's a change in air pressure. And when that happens, you're going to see an area of high air pressure and low air pressure. When that happens, air will always move from areas of high air pressure to low air pressure. Watch this. Whoa, let's break down what just happened. When I placed the lit match into the bottle, the air inside started to heat up. When the flame went out, the air quickly cooled, which lowered the air pressure inside the bottle. When the inside pressure dropped, the air pressure on the outside was suddenly higher, and these molecules wanted to move from high pressure to low pressure, from the outside into the bottle. The balloon, which was in the way of all those molecules trying to get into the bottle, was then pushed down into the bottle. Believe it or not, there are some birds who will use that change in air pressure caused by temperature to aid them in their flight. The black vulture is famous for this. They'll flap their wings to start flying, but then they'll use the heat rising off the planet to soar. But heat isn't the only way to change air pressure. Watch as I use fast moving air to do some crazy stuff with this ping pong ball. 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 As you can see, there is something holding this ping pong ball in place. As the hair dryer blows, it is creating a fast moving column of air. When air moves quickly, the air pressure decreases. That means the ping pong ball is sitting in an area of low air pressure created by the moving air. The air in the rest of the room is moving much slower, so it has a higher air pressure. The high air pressure pushes against the low pressure column, holding the ping pong ball in place. Believe it or not, all flighted birds use this idea of air pressure to fly. So as they fly, their wings are actually cutting through the air, and the wind on top of their wing is moving very fast. Now that fast movement creates a pocket of low air pressure. That means that the pressure below their wing is a lot higher, which means that it's going to push up on their wing, creating lift. But birds aren't only masters of the sky. Ducks and other waterfowls spend a majority of their lives in and out of the water, which means that they have to have special adaptations in order to survive. For example, webbed feet. But let's talk about another one. You may have heard the expression, water off a duck's back. Water off a turtle's back? No. Water off a snake's back? No. Water off a lizard's back? No. Water off a duck's back. Now we're going to demonstrate just what that means. Here's an experiment that you can try at home. First, fill a container with water. Then, take your cotton balls and soak one of them in oil. Once that's soaked, you're going to place both cotton balls on your water and see what happens. The cotton ball with the oil represents a duck. Ducks and other waterfowl have a preening gland that actually secretes oils and coats their feathers. This helps make them more buoyant in the water and waterproof. Oil is less dense than water. Here we have a jar of water and oil. Even when they are mixed together, oil will always settle on the top of the water. Ducks are able to use this to their advantage. They're able to use that extra buoyancy to stay on top of the water while they're foraging for food, saving them energy. The dry cotton ball represents a bird called a cormorant. Think of that cotton ball as a cormorant's feathers. Just like when the dry cotton ball started to get saturated with water, it sinks, the water actually saturates a cormorant's feathers, allowing the bird to sink. But why would a bird want to sink in the water? Well, if your food was there, you would. Cormorants actually utilize that to dive deeper into the water. Although some birds need oil on their feathers and some don't, there is one type of oil that's harmful when birds get caught up in it. Petroleum oil, which can be found in our oceans when we have petroleum oil spills. Now, when birds get caught up in that, it gets their feathers all matted and clumped together, which makes it difficult for gulls and pelicans to fly and to float. Petroleum oil is a main ingredient used in making many plastics. An easy way to cut back on our demand for petroleum oil is to reduce the amount of plastic that we use. An easy way to cut back on plastics is to replace single-use sandwich bags for reusable food containers. This may even help you save a bit of money, as well as some of, some of our ocean's birds. 
Check out some more cool science experiments in our feather physics class and see what else you can discover in our coastal classroom. Be sure to check our Facebook next Thursday for our next exciting video. We'll see you there.